Along with woods, metal has been around for a thousand years and is seen as the more traditional material. Um, over a long time these materials develop into a wide range of metals and alloys and have many useful properties and characteristics. You need to learn and un understand the range of metals available, their general characteristics and the properties along with examples of uses. You also need a good level of understanding of how metals can be processed. This will also include some use of basic heat treatments. You should also be aware of corrosion processes that affect the metals. The range of metals available can be classified as either ferrous or non-ferrous. Within these two groups, metals can be further separated into alloys or non-alloys. What is a ferrous metal? A ferrous metal contains iron, whereas a non-ferrous metal does not contain iron. Alloys are combined uh, metals that are used to create a new metal for a different application. Gold is the only metal that is found in a usable form. All other metals are usually found as ores. For example, aluminium comes as bauxite, spelt B-A-U-X-I-T-E, and is mined from the ground. Around 25% of the Earth's crust is made up of metal ores. Aluminium is the most common ore, followed by iron. This process is expensive to mine the materials. The structure of metals. Metals are made up of crystals. Each crystal has a boundary that is firmly bonded to the boundary of a neighbouring crystal. This means, if you look under a microscope, steel is made up of iron and carbon, and these elements can be seen within a microstructure of the material. Iron is produced directly from its ore through the use of a blast furnace. The material that is produced is called pig iron and is not of sufficient high quality to be of any commercial use. It is then converted into steel by the introduction of carbon. The higher the amount of carbon that's added, the more brittle the material becomes, but also the stronger. For example, a low carbon steel, also used as a mild steel, has a carbon content of less than 0.3%, which means mild steel is quite soft and is used in things like nuts, bolts, washers, car body panels, cookers, etc. Whereas something like cast iron contains 3.5% cast uh, carbon and is used for machine parts, brake discs, engines, etc. is extremely strong, but is actually quite brittle. Non-ferrous metals, as I said earlier, do not contain iron. This group of materials includes aluminium, copper, lead, zinc and tin, as well as precious metals such as silver, gold and platinum. Although aluminium ore is the most abundant in the Earth's crust, aluminium is not the most processed metal, steel is. This is because aluminium is more difficult to process, consuming large amounts of energy. It is therefore more costly to produce aluminium. The production of copper is a similarly expensive process requiring the ore to be crushed followed by a number of refining processes to remove other metals that are not useful. Both aluminium and copper require processing by either electrolytic process or by remounting. These processes are also required for materials such as tin and zinc. Where would you find these metals? Well aluminium has a melting temperature of 660 degrees Celsius it's used in kitchenware, saucepans, it can be drawn out into a wire, I mean it's ductile, so therefore it's used in overhead power cables. It's an excellent conductor of electricity. Copper has a higher melting temperature of around 1100 degrees, or more precisely 1083. It's used as electrical contacts, domestic pipe work for central heating and water. It's also used in a wire, it's used for electrical cable, and it's also used for fine jewellery. Gold has a melting temperature similar to copper of 1063 degrees Celsius. It's mainly used as a metal for jewellery, but it's also used in applications such as electronics for contacts, uh, credit and telephone SIM cards. You'll find it quite a lot um, in lots of electrical components, CD players, etc. Um, another non ferrous to learn is lead. Lead has a low melting point of around 330 degrees compared to gold or copper. It's a very soft metal but very heavy and it's used for flashing on roofs um, such as on guttering and joining brickwork. It's very very durable. Tin has a, a lower melting temperature of 230 degrees. It's rarely used in its pure state but it's used in applications such as food wrapping which is alum uh, tin foil and coated for uh, steel plate in the manufacture of food cans. Tin cans are not made solely of tin. It's a steel can that's coated in tin to prevent the steel from rusting. The last one is zinc. 
Zinc has a melting temperature of 419 degrees and it's used as the coating for steels such as galvanized steels, used for the manufacture of products such as buckets, um, electric units, uh, guttering, small gears. It's, it's usually combined with steel to prevent the steel from rusting away. In the same way that we can make composite metals, we could, uh, materials, we can also make alloys. So we combine materials, two, three, four different uh, metals together to create a better, stronger, more useful material. Examples of these are something like duralium, which is essentially aluminium combined with copper, manganese and magnesium. And it's the structural components for aircraft. Um, bronze is copper and tin, as mentioned earlier. Brass is copper and zinc, um, and they, they, they allow you to make a better use of the original base metals. Now, the benefits of alloying are that, in general, the benefits include uh, changing the melting point, changing the colour, increasing strength, hardness and ductility. It's in, it can enhance the resistance to corrosion and oxidisation. It can change the electrical and thermal properties, and it can improve the flow properties to produce better castings. Now we can alloy steels. We can mix different metals with steels, such as stainless steel is actually mixed with chromium, nickel and magnesium to create a very tough and wear resistant and corrosion resistant metal. And it's used in sinks, cutlery and sanitary wear. Whereas something like tall and die steels are mixed with chromium and manganese and these create a very hard and tough and excellent wear resistance. So the tools in our workshop are made of a tall steel. And lastly, something like a high tensile steel is a steel that's made of nickel which create, creates gr good tensile strength and toughness and is generally corrosion resistant and you find that in car body parts, uh, car engine parts. Now to there's something called uh, work hardening and heat treating of metals um, and it's it's something where you um, work hardening occurs when the material is cold worked for example bending, rolling, hammering and drawing um, you're actually crushing the structure to a tighter form which distorts the crystals and makes it stronger um, to a point where they're highly stressed making them harder in that area. Um, you can also heat them and heat treatments are a process of heating and cooling metals in a controlled way in order to achieve a beneficial change in the properties of the material. These can be annealing, hardening, tempering or normalizing. Annealing, for example, is a heat treatment that reverses the internal stresses associated with work hardening, as mentioned before. It is associated by heating the material to a temperature where the crystals grow, making the material softer and more ductile. The temperature must be maintained for a sufficient amount of time for the metal to soak up the temperature. The material is then allowed to cool very slowly. Um, you can harden some uh, metal by a, um, adding... Uh, this, uh, this heat treatment changes the way the carbon within the steel affects the strength and the hardness of the material. When medium carbon steel, for example, is heated to a specific temperature, the carbon in the structure moves out of its normal position. If the material is then quenched, in other words, throwing it into a bucket of water, the carbon does not have sufficient time to move back to its original position and causes internal stresses which serve to harden and strengthen the metal. Now there's three things you can do to metals. You can waste them, you can add them, or you can redistribute them. And you'll see a diagram in the textbooks on page 38 to see this. Wasting is usually the way that we saw, we drill, we grind, or we pierce out a shape through something such as blanking. Addition is where we combine materials together by the use of bolts and screws, welding, brazing, soldering, or by a glue or an adhesive. And redistribution is where we usually cast something, we forge something, we form it, or we sinter it. Now blanking can be described as similar to a, a cookie cutter, where you have your sheet of metal, and along comes the shape, and it pierces out the, the, the pattern. You, it could either be a sheer cut, such as a guillotine, or it could be blacked out um, as a cookie cutter. The only downside is where it's been cut out you've got a large amount of waste which either is thrown away creating more landfill or it's re-refined into a new metal that can be then reworked. 
Other cutting processes include such a thing as plasma cutting, which is very similar to laser cutting, where you have a gas and you have an electrode and it creates such an intense, intense temperature that it's able to cut through the material. We can use a laser, although for example our laser isn't strong enough in the school, we have to use a, a high wattage laser. Um, it tends to be quite slow um, and also it can be expensive because of the cost of the materials. Uh, redistribution is where we either form, we cast or we mould a metal a shape so if you think of a thermos flask where you put your hot soup in when you go for a walk um, that's made by a process where you blank out the shapes you use your cookie cutter to cut out a circle you then press that into a simple cut sh cup shape and you deep draw it into a cylinder a similar process can be used for car body panels where you have a mold and then the mould comes down onto the material, the metal, aluminium, steel, etc. And then it's shaped around the mould to, to create a body panel. A way of redistributing a metal is by spinning. And if you think of a metal bowl or a trumpet, where you've got that metal cone shape, it's simply a disc which is then turned around on a lathe, which is then pushed into a mandrel, which could be a, a wood-turned uh, former and a roller helps to push it over it, similar to a pottery making. Now, the processes you need to revise. These include sand casting, where you create a pattern in car in, in a casting sand, and then you pour a hot metal into it. You crack the sand away, and when the metal is cooled after cracking it away, you've got your simple shape. However you will have the impressions of the sand so it's not always the best quality finish. Other processes include die casting and this is the most common one. A simple gravity die casting process will be using the pewter casting bay where you have a simple mould, you heat the metal, you open up the reservoir of molten metal and it falls into the mould. When the mould opens out comes the metal product. There is another process which is high pressure die casting. Similar in a way to injection moulding, the metal is mounted to a high temperature so it's molten. It's then pushed by a ram into the moulds. It's then cooled and the moulds open to create a very very detailed process, uh, product. The only thing is with this process, the cost of the equipment is high to set up, the moulds are expensive but it allows you to create a an, an high number, high volume process so you can create lots and lots and lots of identical products. There is something which is a very old fashioned process called investment casting and this usually involves creating a mould in wax you then cover the wax mould in a clay or a, a plaster you then put this block of wax with plaster into a kiln it melts the wax leaving you with a hollow chamber you then fill that hollow chamber with molten metal it then cools and you crack away the plaster clay mould or you throw it into an ice cold bucket of water which explodes the clay and out comes your metal product and this is a very very traditional thousand year old process the advantages are it gives you a very good finish but the disadvantage is the cost is very high and the size of components are limited by the weight. Sintering is a process used in the manufacture of materials that are difficult to process in any other way. The process of sintering relies on the materials being crushed into a powder. The powder is then compacted into a die, a former, which will eventually give the product its shape. The compacted shape is then heated to promote the bonding between the particles of the metal. Forging. Forging is a process where you heat the metal, you bend it, you shape it, you draw it, you punch it. A traditional method used by blacksmiths. You can use lots of tools for this. It is a very labour intensive process and will be used only in maybe batch or one off productions. You will not use forging as a process for mass production.